Welcome to my lecture on validating the simulation model. This figure gives you an idea of the place of validation in a simulation study. We've seen this before, um, and here we're highlighting the validation stage. So naturally, the simulation study is, is a, a large scale study. Uh, simulation is just one part of it. It starts with the problem definition, um, probably even before that, recognizing that there is a problem. Uh, the system analysis and design phase, including data collection, uh, doing your analysis. Um, and then finally, model design, uh, meaning uh, the conceptual model, the logic flow of the model. And then finally, the implementation of the model in a particular the software system of your choice. You could be using a general purpose uh, programming language. You could be using a simulation tool like uh, Simio or Arena or SimScript. Um, and um, from there, you look at what input, your, what your input to the model will be, uh, the, the input data. Uh, we've done that. Um, the, prep, the programming part, uh, we're actually doing the converting the model from a conceptual model to a runnable model. Um, the verification phase, we're going to talk about the difference between verification and validation. Basically, verification is similar uh, in concept to debugging a program. And then here we have validating. And you can see how we could validate back to the model stage, the model building stage, or we could validate back uh, to the um, system, looking at the system in the real world. Uh, verification pretty much does one and validation does the other. Once we finish the validation stage, once we come out of that, we have a valid simulation model to work with. And we have to finish up constructing our experimental design. What is it that we will want to do with this model? Uh, and which we, by the way, should have thought a little bit about uh, before building it. And then finally, simulation, where we're actually running the model um, and conducting the experiment, the statistical experiment with the simulation model. So once we've done that, we've generated all the data of the experiment using simulation, uh, then goes statistical analysis, uh, decision making, and implementing any decisions uh, that might come out of this uh, pro project experience. Uh, why validate? It's, a, it's an integral part of a simulation study, of course. Um, what's the purpose of validation? Why is it, does it have such a, a solid central place in the study? Well, of course, we want to produce a better model, and validating the model will help us to do that. It will also help us to determine if the model that we do have is a good one. Um, so it helps us to prove model credibility. Uh, and we, we're, not, we're never, ever doing this kind of work on our own just for ourselves. Um, we always have other people to bring in to the decision-making process. And we have to justify uh, what we are doing here and show that, yes, this really is a good model, and here's what the model does. Let's talk more about the difference between verification and validation. Verifying the model, uh, validating the model. Verification is simply, here is my simulation model. Is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? Uh, did I implement the conceptual model? correctly. Um, so it's, it's really all about the implementation, not necessarily validating the conceptual model itself. So we want to know if the model works. Does it work the way it was intended to work? That's internal validation. There's another name for it is internal validation. On the other hand, external validation is asking the question, is this simulation model an accurate, true representation of the real system that we're studying. So it's more than just debugging. You're questioning the validity of the model itself, no matter what language or what software system it was implemented in. 
Um, this is generalizing to the external world. This is external validation. We want to make sure our model was correct, validation. We want to make sure our model was implemented the way it says that it's supposed to be, that the, the actual running of the simulation model, the working simulation model, does what the conceptual model says that it would do. Um, and finally, validation itself is goal oriented. So you might validate your model for one purpose, but then the same, the same exact model might not be valid if you're validating it for some other purpose. So validation uh, depends not only on the model itself, but also on the outcome. What are you doing this simulation for? It's a mistake to think of uh, validation, model validation, as an either or idea. It's not. Uh, there's a, a degree to this notion of validation. Um, can you absolutely uh, say for certain that a model is valid? No. Same way you can't absolutely for certain say that a program is 100% bug free because that will never happen. Um, and similarly, uh, a model, and in particular a simulation model, you can never absolutely say for sure with 100% certainty that your model is a valid is a 100% valid representation of the real world. If you think of validity as going from zero to 100, then as the validity of your model goes up, well, of course, the development cost of the model goes up. Your model becomes increasingly complex in order to mirror the real world. And therefore, the value to the decision maker of anything that comes out of this model um, may increase slightly, but at a decreasing rate. You reach the, the point of diminishing returns. In fact, the benefit to cost uh, ratio, or uh, the BCR curve, would likely peak at something less than the most valid model money can buy. And again, not a 100% valid model but even the most valid model money can buy. So we, as in a lot of areas of decision-making, we're going to end up uh, learning how to satisfy. There are a number of different ways that we can validate our simulation models. We're going to look at um, a small number of these, uh, the, but the, the, they're the goodies. Um, number one, we're gonna look at face validity, which is appropriate for many, many models. Um, testing the assumptions of the model, which is always a good way of validating. Um, comparing input-output transformations, which if it's possible for you to do it with your uh, simulation model, that's kind of like the gold standard. And then, of course, uh, using field tests. Trace validity means looking at our simulation model, does it seem valid on the face of it, on its face? In order to do this, we line up uh, subject experts, some experts of this particular system that you're simulating. Um, and maybe some of them will be simulation experts, but maybe some of them will not be. They'll only be experts uh, of this system, the way it exists in the real world. Uh, your model, if, it's, if it has documentation, it will be a big help. Otherwise, you will have to be there step by step explaining. And sometimes your explanations may be like leading questions. So it's better as far as possible for it, you, your presence not to be required. Um, have the experts look carefully at your flow diagram, at your conceptual model. Walk through it. Have them walk through the system and ask, Does, is this the way things happen in the real world? Does this seem right to you? Are, are these the kinds of processes and in this order and in this to this degree that entities uh, flow through in the system you're familiar with. How about the input data? Could you take a look at my input data and see if that seems reasonable to you or if anything raises any flags? Um, how about the outputs? Let me let's look at an output at, at you know one one run let's say or several runs and see um, what the system produces. And does this look like something that would come out of the true, true life system that you're familiar with? Um, you can also, in this sense, uh, test the, 
the robustness of your model. Try running your model with different outputs, you know, low, medium, high. Uh, stress the model and see what happens and see what it produces and ask the experts, does, is this, does this look like what would happen in the real world? Um, or is this something that, you know, we should try to make sure the model never reaches this state because it never happens in the real world. Of course, you, you not only want to check with experts, you want to check with other people who've been modeling in this domain uh, because they have already done the work ahead of you and why not learn from their mistakes, uh, well, or from their successes. Um, close observation of the real system is very good com and compare it with close observation of your simulation model, your running simulation model. Um, and of course, um, uh, when it comes to face validity, even looking at a, a close theoretical model, something that's close to what you're simulating, um, will, you know, will help uh, to, to validate and to to justify uh, the the logic flow of your model. And it's a good idea to do that together with uh, subject experts as well. Uh, part of building your simulation model and validating it includes testing the assumptions under which you built that model in the first place. Uh, you can do them one at a time or several at once, but this is where it it happens. Uh, first, you've got structural assumptions, which basically include um, how does the system operate? Is your model operating in a similar manner? How do customers decide to enter the queue, leave the queue, choose a server? Uh, if there are multiple queues, do they do, do customers make their choice right to left, or do they look to see if they um, kind of like the way the server looks, um, you know, what, what influences their decision and does it make a difference? Is, is that influence important enough for you to build it into your model? Then we look at the, um, the data assumptions, which are also very, very critical. Um, look at the parameters that you used in your uh, input distributions and fiddle with them. Let's try changing them, see what happens to the output and if it still looks reasonable. Um, in, in, in that sense, I'm going to skip over data fitting in, in, for a minute and go right to sensitivity analysis uh, because that's part of what we're doing here. Let's try crazy values and see how robust uh, the, this, uh, this data is, this, this model is to crazy data change the values of the parameter, make them very, very tiny, try a negative value, make them very large, uh, see how far out you have to get before the model really deteriorates. Um, and this is all under the heading of a stress test. This is really basically kind of like working with machinery. You're stressing it and you're looking to see what happens and how badly you can stress it before it actually goes kablooey. Um, getting back to data fitting, which probably is misplaced here, but I'm not redoing the slide. Um, this, this has to do with looking at your input data um, and seeing, well, am I, what am I um, trying to do here? Am I, do I have input data that I collected from uh, the real world? Am I using the data as is? is uh, am I using it in an empirical model? Am I trying to fit this data? to um, a theoretical model, or how about my output data, the output from the, the simulation? If theoretically I have information that tells me the output from the simulation should be uh, log normal, then maybe I should test the output from the simulation model as part of my validation process. Any computer program, uh, any algorithm, and most particularly a simulation model, uh, is an input-output transformation device. It takes input, uh, runs it through some kind of processing, and produces output. And indeed, the real-world system that we're simulating is the same. We look at the inputs, and then we look at the outputs. Uh, so the real system is also an input-output transformation device. We could have a stream of inputs, and we could have a stream of outputs 
from several systems or from the simulation model and the system that it's trying to uh, model. Uh, and we can compare them in some way. Um, and if they're close enough, we can declare uh, the simulation model uh, to have been validated. Well, declare is a little bit strong, but you know what I mean. It's a matter of degree. So how do we do that? Well, one way is to look at this uh, like a Turing test. Uh, remember that a Turing test is looking at a computer program and um, um, trying to determine if the output that's produced by the computer is indistinguishable from behavior that uh, the human um, would be capable of. And usually it has to do, you, you may have seen the movie, The Imitation Game. So it might have to do with uh, taking some sort of input, simple input, producing an output like this person who just spoke to me is female or this person who just spoke to me is male uh, and see if the, the um, human user uh, and the computer produce relatively similar uh, outputs over the course of several trials. Um, and so we, we can look at the output from the simulation model and look at the output from the real world and say, well, you know, are they indistinguishable? Do they look about the same? So that's the, that's the Turing test in uh, simulation validation. And then we have something that you might call uh, predicting the past. We have a model of a real system, but we, we also have the data from this real system, the input data and the output data. We can use the input data as real input data from the real world into the, com the computer simulation model. So in other words, in this case, we won't be sampling from a distribution that we have fit to the data. We'll be using the actual input data itself. And um, so the two input streams uh, are the same. And now we look at the output. And how do you decide if two groups of data are the same or different? Well, uh, we've all learned about the t-test and it might be, uh, in, indeed, it might be a paired t-test because for the same input, we have two different outputs, one from one system and one from the, the model. Um, and uh, similarly, if we don't collect enough um, of, a, of an N, of a sample size, uh, we can use a non-parametric uh, two-group test like the Kolmogorov-Smirnov in order to compare um, output probability distributions. Um, finally, we know that when we create a simulation model, there may not be a real model to look at, to either do a Turing test or a t-test um, and, and look at the input input output transformations because the real, real system didn't exist. I might be creating my simulation model because we need a lot of data before uh, we build a very, very expensive system. Um, it could be we already have the real world system, but we're planning to make very costly changes to it. And so we want to run the simulation first. So there are a few things we can do. Um, obviously, we can't compare our simulation model to the real system in order to validate it. Um, but we can possibly uh, simplify the simulation a little bit uh, so that it's close to an analytic version of our model, let's say an analytic approximation, and compare that with the real system and then if when that's uh, with the, the simulation model and the analytic approximation and if we can get uh, that validated then we can bring up the simulation model again uh, to, to where we want it and um, in the case where we're looking at an alternative system um, we could model the current system and do the comparisons to the current system and then make the changes. So we won't know that the simulation model really is valid, but we will know it's valid to the system as it is now. And that may be good enough um, once we make our changes uh, to, to look back and say, well, here's how the system seems to change uh, from what we have today to what we will have based on uh, the simulated model. Uh, predicting the past is all well and good, 
uh, but perhaps we can validate our simulation model in the future uh, with all of the other ways of, of validating our simulation model that we've looked at. At some point, you just have to accept that you've done the best you can and you build the simulation model. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your validation is over. Um, the, in a, especially in a very, very large scale project, you may be going back to make adjustments. Um, so how about um, build the system after you have what you think is a valid simulation model, and then go ahead and do the runs and compare the real system to the simulated model. Um, if you find that the model does not reflect reality, you for sure will want to make some adjustments and see what that might mean for the real world system. Of course, one of the things you want to decide is this real system that I've just created, am I happy with it? If I am, maybe it's best to leave it alone. But still, um, knowledge is, is power and, and knowledge is never wasted.